Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, we really like to set up planners on this channel. So if you really like planners, planner content, um, writing videos, and especially like planners for writers, then make sure to subscribe because I do all kinds of these videos. Today, we're going to be setting up a series binder. So I've set up a couple different writer's notebooks and planners on this channel before. Actually, my last one, was a big size like writer's workbook setup that I made. And the one before that was um, like a classic, a classic size writer's notebook where I had different tabs for a couple different areas of my writing and my business. And I decided to break out these specific tabs. So character, world, outlines, and edits. And I'm actually going to be setting up a new big size writer's notebook for a series that I'm coming up with ideas for and hopefully I'm going to write. This writer's notebook and writer's planner that I have, I'm keeping several of the sections in here that I had already put. Uh, marketing ideas, courses, Photoshop, and then I have one that's called 12 week year. That's for something else. But this is all like my writer business type of stuff and just like stuff from my own personal learning. And so I'm gonna keep all of that in here because I feel like all of these go well in the classic size. Um, and just up here is my like monthly dashboard writing planner. Uh, if you wanna see a video about this, I will link that up above. But yeah, so I think that I'm gonna keep a certain binder for every like series that I wanna write and for just different areas of my writing career. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to be adding tabs similar to this in my big size is what I'm trying to say for this series. And I want it in a big size because that way I can print out whatever I want and just punch it and stick it in. And I don't have to worry about cutting it down to like a classic size. So the reason I have this four month daily planner here from the happy planner is literally just for the discs because I really, really like these discs. They're like a copper color and they only come on this specific planner. The Happy Planner doesn't sell like a set of these. So previously I had bought another one of these planners so now I have two so that I would have enough discs for the big size. So I'm just gonna pull out the rest of the copper discs that I have. I'm just gonna like find them out of here. So this comes with nine, so I need two more. So here they are. I think they're the right color, yeah. So I'm gonna pull all these discs off and use these two for my other planner I had bought of the same one, and I'm going to set up the cover so that I can start filling it up with stuff. And this might take a while because I have to like disassemble this brand new planner. And I got this on sale from the Happy Planner website. And actually, <laughs> I ended up getting two more of these planners because they had a buy one, get one free planner sale recently as well and I wanted a couple more sets of these discs because they are my absolute favorite that the happy planner has probably ever come out with and they'll go with so many different styles of like however I want to set up a planner so I'll probably speed this part up just because it's probably going to take a little bit and I know you don't want to sit here and watch me <laughs> take apart this entire planner All right, so there's that. I took all these pages out, and now I just have these discs. So I'm gonna add these other two discs that I pulled from my stash. Now we're gonna see about a cover. So I got this really cute Disney, it's like a teacher planner. I found it at Walmart, and it looks like this, and it has little Disney characters on every uh, page of it, which is really cute. And I am using this. Uh, like the inside of this planner for like a wellness log. But I want to use this frosted cover that came on it. It says dream until your dreams come true. I'm going to use this frosted cover and put my own scrapbook paper underneath it instead of using this cute scrapbook paper that came underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and add all these discs to this cover. 
Okay, there we go. So it was actually a little bit more difficult to add it to this cover just because it's kind of slippery, but there we go. That looks cute. And now I want a Sherlock looking piece of paper to go under here. So this is going to be my series binder for an idea I have that I'm tentatively calling Brides of Baker Street. And it's going to be like a historical romance series of standalones. They're all going to be interconnected, like with recurring characters and of course, Sherlock Holmes. And there's gonna be mysteries in every story and there's gonna be a romance in every story. So that's why I'm calling it Brides of Baker Street. Um, so it's gonna be in, set in Sherlock's London. Um, Sherlock Holmes is actually in the public domain. So I am able to use his character and I'll probably come up with like my own version of his character. It won't be exactly the same as what's in uh, most of the stories, probably, just so I can have some like fun. <laughs> and it just sounds like a really fun series to write and I'm excited to start planning it. Um, hopefully I can make it happen. But So this is a paper pad from Recollections and it is called, uh, it's called Dark Academia. And I actually found this at Michael's for like $5. So it was a really good deal because it has a lot of papers in here. And all the papers are so cute. This is actually probably my, probably my favorite paper pack I've ever gotten. So this is like some book spines and it has three of every design on here. Unfortunately, they're not double-sided, but that's okay. And I'm gonna have to use a lot of these because I'm gonna be making like quite a few dividers. So I'm gonna like pull all of my favorite papers out of here. Some of them are a little bit more plain, like this is like a suede texture, I think, or like a leather texture. Um, but these are just some of the papers that are in it. And it also has these really cool like washi strips, which is nice. But I'm just gonna do a quick flip through of some of these pages so you can see. And it's got these really pretty journaling cards. So I'm gonna actually put this out because I definitely want to use these for something in my little book I'm making. Um, I definitely want to use this too because this is just gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. And this. I love this one with all the old letters. Super cool. And this will be cool because my series binder will be in the same like style. Uh, like it'll match this like vibe of the book so it'll be really cool to use this i'm really excited and i'm going to definitely use this because this is just gorgeous too got all these different paintings and i definitely want to use this cute one with all the books the old books on the shelf i'm so excited about this scrapbook paper i'm such a nerd um, and then we've got this, which is actually really nice too. Maybe I'll pull one of these. I think I need, I don't know, I need several pieces of paper. So I think also what I want to do is pull, I think I want to pull one of these brown leathers. And then I saw like a, like a tweed or something that I want to pull as well. Right here. This tweed I really like. I think it's called Tweed. I can't remember actually what it's called. Okay, so that'll be good enough to get us started. And if I need to pull more, I will. But also, I have this dark watercolor florals book. So I'm going to do a quick flip through here. Uh, I also got this at Michael's one time. I'm going to flip through here and just see if there's any that stand out as maybe ones that would go good with my, my whole like old London style series. Ooh, that one's pretty. I like that. I like this one too, but I'm not sure if it goes. This one might. That's pretty. Okay, I think I'm just going to pull this one. This one reminds me of like a vintage illustration. So, we might use that. So I think for now that's probably enough scrapbook papers and then like I said I can always pull more if I end up needing them. But I'm going to take this little cute little tree stump that I found at a thrift store. It's a little ceramic tree stump that someone probably made. Um, and in here I've got a bunch of these labels that I've already made. 
And these are going to be the labels for all of the little sections that I want in here. Um, so I definitely want a section for edits, locations. Um, I'm gonna need to do a lot of research about Old London. I wanna have like a section just for like what the different locations in the series look like and everything about them. The mysteries. So there's gonna be a different mystery in every book, hopefully. <laughs> um, this one says names. I misprinted it the first time, so I just did it again on the same label. So I wanna keep like a running list of all the names that I come across that I really like that could fit for characters in the story. I have planning. So I'm gonna put some planning sheets in the front. So that'll actually be my first tab. I've got characters. So I wanna make like a character profile of every like main character in the series or like a recurring character that will be in the series. I've got research and Sherlock. So anything related to Sherlock specifically as a character, I wanna put in its own section so that I can have like a quick and easy reference for when I'm hopefully writing about him. So let's start cutting these out. So let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then also I want an outlines one. Do I have an outlines one? I already can't remember. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have an outlines one. So I'm gonna make that real quick. My little label maker here. Okay, so this is outlines. Okay, so that is nine total. And for now, that's that's all that's gonna go in this. And I can always add more sections. Let's see how many papers we have. This one doesn't count because I'm gonna do like different stuff with it probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need one more paper. And basically we're just going to trace some tabs onto these papers and cut them out and then punch them. So let me find one more that I like. Oh, I forgot about this one. This one's really nice. Okay, I'll use this one. It's like literally right in the front and I didn't even notice it. <laughs> or I did notice it, but I forgot all about it. Now to find the tabs, I'm just gonna take the monthly sections out of here. One, two, three, four, five will fit. Um, so we'll take May 1st and trace this. So we'll need to do it almost twice for each divider. Oh, also, what do I want to be my cover? I need a cover. <laughs> okay, let, let's find the cover first. Um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, I guess. I forgot all about the cover, though, to be honest. Um, I need to find my favorite one. So this one's a strong contender. Very, very pretty. This one's also a strong contender. I love this one. This one's really nice. And that one, of course, is really nice. So let's take a few of these and put them underneath this frosted cover and see how they're gonna look. And then I'll pick one. Hopefully I'll be able to choose one. There's so many nice ones. That's what that looks like. I love that. I really love that, okay. That's what this one looks like. It's got like the gold foil underneath it too, which is also nice, but it's not my favorite. So that, that one I don't think I'm gonna use for the cover. Let's try this one. That's really pretty. I love that. And then this one. Ooh, I really like that one too. I'm really torn between this one and the letters one. Hmm, I think I'm gonna have to go with the letters. I can always change it out. I can change it out every day if I want to, literally every day. <laughs> so, and I have three of each of these patterns so I can make like a tab with it and a cover with it and it's totally fine. So I need to, and we're gonna trace this onto here. Which section of it do I want? Um, do I want the middle or do I want the edge? Decisions, decisions, it's so hard. Okay, um, I'm just gonna use the edge because I like how all these papers look layered like that and the different darknesses of the paper, so. And I'm gonna use this to trace because the tabs are actually a different size. 
So this is actually a little bit bigger than the tab, so it'll cover it, which is nice. I want that. So what I'm gonna do to avoid, I have to cut it by hand with scissors. So to avoid like it being wonky at all, I'm gonna trace it. And it's good that I put it on the edge because then I only have to trace two sides. So let's punch this. I'm gonna take this to line it up. Just make sure I'm punching in the right spot. Stick that in. Ooh, that looks really nice. Okay, so I think now we can do the tabs. Okay, so now that I've made a huge mess, I have nine tabs. So I've got five here and four here. And I saved arguably the funnest part to do on camera. Because all that cutting out was pretty tedious. But I'm gonna see which label goes on which tab. Um, so I think planning, planning makes sense to be first. Okay, so planning goes first. And then I think, uh, hmm, either outlines or research. I think I'm gonna do outlines and then research. Just so I can have, like, whenever I have an outline for the story, I can print it out and stick it, like, in the front so that it's just easily accessible as I'm writing. I don't know. That just makes sense in my head. Tab number three will be research. I think these labels look so cute because they just look so vintage. So it just matches the theme of everything. I think I'm going to put Sherlock here. And then characters, like the rest of the characters. Sherlock is one of the characters, but I just feel like he needs his own tab, you know? So this tab is like, or this word is really long, so I might have to cut off a little bit of the S, but I'm okay with that. So this locations is actually kind of like, I guess you could call it like world, like world building, you know? So if I was doing a fantasy series, that's probably what I would call this tab. Then we'll do mysteries. I'm actually nervous because <laughs> I have not written a mystery, but the mystery, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna write like pure mystery books. Like it's gonna be romance, but with mystery elements. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, so then I'll do names and then edits for my last two tabs. So that's what everything looks like. Planning, outlines, research, Sherlock, characters, locations, mysteries, names, and edits. So quite a few sections. Now I'm going to take my Happy Planner Punch. And just punch these and then stick them in. This is a big size so it's hard to get like, everything in frame at once. So here in this front like planning section, I printed another copy of this plan and write a series that I had put previously in my other big setup. Um, this one's specifically for this series. So I think I'm also going to stick in um, a planning sheet in this planning section. So let's stick that in here. I actually think I'm going to stick this eight step process for a solid scene worksheet in here too, just to keep it handy for this series specifically. Um, so let's see, where should I put it? I guess I can put it in planning because I'm like planning the scenes and planning my outlines. So I'll put it here at the end. Okay. And then for the rest of this book, I think what I'm going to do is just put in a bunch of note paper in each of these sections. And I think that'll be it for now. And then I'm gonna revisit, whenever I'm closer to being able to work on this series, I'm gonna revisit and I'll probably print out like special sheets and like um, I can see myself printing out like different Sherlock, maybe like collages or vision boards to put in here just to kind of give myself some ideas. Um, and then also some different research that I find online, printing it out, maybe printing out like Wikipedia articles. I can see myself doing that. And then obviously, whenever I'm finished with an outline for a specific book in this series, I will print it out and stick it in here. 
And then whenever I'm working on the next book in the series, I will replace the outline in this notebook with the new one. And then character sheets, same thing. I think I'm gonna be like finding a good character sheet and printing it and putting it in here. Um, probably a similar thing for locations and like a bunch of pictures. I wanna find like a lot of inspiration on like Pinterest and different sites. I'll probably be doing a lot of research about like how to structure a good mystery and putting that in here, as well as like my ideas for the mysteries themselves. And then I have like a running list on my computer of names that I like. So I'm, I'll probably print that and stick it in here and then like I'll be able to write it in pen as well. I don't have to have it all printed. And then edits, I'm gonna have a page for like, like a series Bible in here, um, like things that I want to keep consistent throughout the series, making notes of all of that, and just different edits that I'm doing as I'm going through a specific book and making edits. So I'm going to uh, add some paper in here, let's see. So I'd actually bought like two copies of the same big size notebook, and the cover actually looks like this to the notebook, but I flipped it inside out because I like this side better. It's very pretty. And so I have one extra of these, but I'm not gonna use this divider. And then I have all this paper because I had bought two copies. So, unfortunately this doesn't really match the theme, but it's all I have as far as big size. So I'll flip past these couple sections because I'm gonna be printing stuff out to put in there eventually, but I will add paper to this. Another fun idea I have for this Sherlock section, there's several Sherlock Holmes games that are put out by the developer Frogwares. And um, I think I could go and like watch playthroughs of those games and like see all the different environments and just get some inspiration from that and print out like screenshots from that game. I think that would be a really good thing to put in here as well. So I just want to have this set up so that whenever I'm ready to start working on the series, I will be all ready to go. Okay, so I'm putting in my last set of paper here and that's it for now. Let me know if you want to see like more videos about this binder as I do updates to it. I'm not sure how like interested people are in this specific series binder, so do let me know in the comments. But isn't it cute? Like, I'm so obsessed, and I think that it'll be really, really good for planning out this series. And just, like, if I have other ideas and different stuff I want to add, I'll let you know, too, in, like, an update video. But, yeah, I think this video is already probably long enough, but <laughs> let me know what you thought, and thank you so much for watching. It is release week for Castle of Cards and Shadows, my new book release. So if you're interested in reading that romantic Pied Piper retelling, you'll find the link for it in the description where you can go get your copy. And I will see you again really soon with a new video. Thanks for watching.